different from each other. For instance, consider yourself and a friend. Are you both of the same height? Does your nose look exactly like your friend's nose? Is your hand span the same as your friend's? The answer to all these questions would be no, right? However, if you were to compare yourself and your friend with a monkey, what would you say? Obviously, you and your friend have a lot in common when compared with a monkey, right? But suppose then I ask you to add a cow to the list of comparisons. Then you would think that the monkey has a lot more in common with you and your friend than with a cow, right? Now for a fact, we already know that humans are evolved from monkeys. And that is why we share more common features with a monkey. On the other hand, a cow has similar features like a goat or a sheep. And various organisms differ not only in their forms, but also in their structures and modes of living. And that is what we are going to learn in this chapter. Diversity in living organisms. If you take a close look, then you will see that each organism in this world whether it is a plant, an animal, or a microorganism, is unique in itself. This uniqueness of individuals forms the basis of diversity among the living organisms. And this diversity in living organisms leads us to the term biodiversity. The term biodiversity was coined by Walter G. Rosen in 1986. Actually, the origin of this word lies in two different words, biological diversity. Our ancestors walked on all four limbs, their spines arched like a bow to withstand the weight of the organs suspended below. But then we stood up and that caused the change in other subsequent body design. So this means that the characteristic that came into existence earlier are likely to be the fundamental characteristics than characteristics that came into existence later. So the classification of all life form is closely related to their evolution. And Charles Darwin first described the idea of evolution in 1859 in his book, The Origin of Species. Darwin suggested that organisms are related to each other by descent. They had common ancestors from which they gradually evolved into their present form. The ancestral forms were simple and are called primitive. And primitive organisms have evolved into advanced organisms which are more complex. This process of gradual change from simple life forms to complex life forms is called evolution. And this is how evolutions have laid an elementary stone or pathway for classification. Now, the initial system of classification contained only two broad categories of kingdoms, namely plant kingdom and animal kingdom. This system was suggested by Carolus Linnaeus in 1758. He termed this classification as two kingdom system of classification. Later on, some taxonomic studies indicated that certain organisms did not strictly fall either under plant kingdom or animal kingdom. And accordingly, in 1866, a German zoologist, Ernst Haeckel, raised a third kingdom for unicellular organisms. He called it Protista. Next, in 1959, an American ecologist, Robert Whittaker, proposed two more kingdoms. He called the fourth kingdom Monera. The bacteria, which are prokaryotes, fall under this kingdom. The fifth kingdom is called Fungi. The fungi, which lack chlorophyll and obtain their food through absorption, fall under this category. So the current classification, which is widely used, was proposed by Whittaker and has five kingdoms. 
monera, protista, fungi, plantae, and animalia. Again, these groups are formed on the basis of three factors. Now, the main aim of a taxonomic study is to assign organisms an appropriate place within the systematic framework of classification. This framework is called as the taxonomic hierarchy. In other words, taxonomic hierarchy is a system of classification into which taxonomic categories are arranged in descending order. In this, the taxonomic groups are arranged in a definite manner from higher to lower categories. Now, in biology, a category is called as taxon. The plural form of taxon is taxa. So, the taxa used in classification of plants and animals are kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. However, as you can see here, in case of plants, term division is used in place of phylum. Now, both in animal and plant kingdoms, the lowest category is a species and the highest is a kingdom. Rest of the categories lie within this framework. The categories in the hierarchy are placed in ascending order. As we go upwards from the species towards the kingdom, the number of similar characters decreases. Tutor me. For more amazing video lectures, download the free app on the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store.